Hey gang, welcome to another version of Wisdom Wednesday. And guess what? Believe it or not, it is the last Wednesday in July. So next month or next week, the same thing. Next week and next month will be the first Wisdom Wednesday of August. And I'll introduce our new theme for the month of August. But as you remember, if you've tuned in through this past month, the theme for the month of July was Make a splash in July. And it was exactly what it sounds like, encouraging people to stay hydrated, jump in the water whenever you can, get out of this incredible heat wave that we've been having, 105 degrees almost every day. Uh, I think they set a record number of 100 degree plus days for the month of July. So it's been plenty hot down here. Um, but we're getting to the point where we can see the light at the end of the tunnel and August is right around the corner. Uh, if you've tuned in to Wisdom Wednesday for the first time, stumbled on us, well, here's what we do. We do a little scientific presentation, usually about dentistry, but not always. Sometimes it's just about general health issues and how to keep a healthier lifestyle and a healthier body, uh, which today is no different from that. Uh, it's not going to be specifically about dentistry. And then I always give a health tip at the end, something quick and easy, down and dirty and useful that you can take to the bank right away. So today we're going to talk about orienteering and a couple of other things that you, techniques you can use to keep your brain stimulated and stay younger for longer. Uh, what is orienteering? Well, we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, last week we talked about um, different ways you could use your brain creatively, uh, physically, and e mentally to uh, stimulate your brain in ways that would help you stay young. This one kind of follows along the same lines. Uh, we came across this. This actually came from the Harvard uh, health letter, newsletter. Uh, researchers found 158 people, so it's not a big study, and it wasn't a double-blind scientific study. Oh, and if you're worrying about my lip, I bit my lip last night right after dinner, and it swelled up overnight, and so it's, this has actually gone down about twice what it was this morning. I looked like I'd been in a prize fight and lost. Um, so anyway, orienteering, uh, and they, they found, these researchers found 158 people that were healthy between the ages of 18 and 87, so that's quite a big age range, some of whom were just physically fit, and some of them whom were orienteering, and they studied the two different groups. What is orienteering? Well, I've seen people doing it around Austin, but imagine if you were dropped off in the middle of a forest that was unfamiliar to you, and all you had is a compass uh, and hopefully some water, um, but a compass and a map, a pretty detailed map, and you had to find your way out of the forest. Well, that's what orienteering is. There are groups that do it right here in Austin, and I've seen them around Zilker Park where sometimes they make it kind of like a scavenger hunt where they have to check off certain checkpoints that they've found from the clues before they can go on to the next one. And it's all done under a time clock, uh, different depending on the course. They also do them on mountain bikes. They also do them on hike and bike trails so that you're going up and down. Uh, so you can find all different kinds. But these researchers found that the people who were orienteering had um, much better navigational skills. So they were able to, in a, in a uh, environment, pick out the landmarks because they were used to reading those maps and using a compass and having to intellectually figure out which way do I go. Um, they were also better at navigational memory. So if they'd been someplace once, they remembered it better than people who had never orienteered before but were otherwise in fairly decent shape. Now again, this wasn't a double-blind scientific study. It was just a bunch of researchers uh, researching this. But they concluded that aerobic exercises release chemicals in the brain that foster the growth of new brain cells. Forty years ago, they told us once brain cells die, they don't go back. That was how much things have changed. We now know that you get these neural synaps synapses between brain cells, 
if you make a connection. Like if you're on one of these orientation, orienteering trips and you happen to see the University of Texas Tower as part of it, the next time you see that, you're going to be able to put it in perspective gravitationally and navigationally much better than somebody who had never done any kind of orienteering because they might have seen the tower and just kind of ignored it. So, so that's what orienteering is all about. If you're interested in it, there's national societies of orienteering and you can go online and find groups that are interested in the same thing that you might be interested in. Try it out. Sounds like kind of fun. So along those same lines, here's six other ways that you can keep your brain young. Um, orienteering, we talked about that just now. Um, there's another one, uh, get mental stimulation. Now you could probably guess four of these six. Uh, there are things that we pound over and over again. Eat better, get more sleep, uh, exercise. Uh, but the first one is mental stimulation, doing Sudoku puzzles. I know people that do the New York Times crossword puzzle every day till they finish. They have easy ones and they have hard ones. But doing something like that that's mentally stimulating uh, has been proven to keep your brain functioning for uh, at a higher level for long for more years. Number two, the same old baddie that shows up all the time. Get more physical exercise. Research has proven over and over again that people who exercise regularly stay healthier for longer. Um, unless you walk out in front of a car, then you're getting exercise, but that doesn't that doesn't count. Um, sorry. Um, number three, improve your diet. Sorry, exercise and diet come up all the time in all these Wisdom Wednesdays. But good nutrition has been shown by research over and over again to feed. It feeds your brain. Your brain uh, is stimulated by a good diet. And so particularly the Mediterranean diet, which is getting a new resurgence of popularity, uh, there's a new Mediterranean restaurant that just opened across the street from our office, so I'll be checking that out soon. But <clears throat> a diet uh, that emphasizes fruits, vegetables, uh, fish, um, uh, unsaturated oils, uh, the so-called Greek, Greek or Mediterranean diet is supposed to be really good not only for your body, for weight loss, but also for your brain. Number four, and this is an interesting one, care for your emotions. People who are depressed, who are anxious, who are sleep deprived or exhausted tend to score poorly on cognitive function tests. So that kind of goes without saying. You would figure that somebody who's sleep deprived is not going to be able to concentrate as well as somebody who's getting a lot of sleep. So try to get your eight hours of sleep a night. Uh, number five, uh, protect your head. Well, that kind of goes without saying. I can see wearing a bicycle helmet when you're bicycling. I can see wearing a motorcycle helmet if you're motorcycling. But when I skydove for my 70th birthday and they made me put on a little helmet about the size of a bicycle helmet, I was like, from 14,000 feet, I don't really think this is going to make much difference. I, I just didn't really see the point. Um, but, you know, the point being, protect your head because head injuries can lead to complications on down the road. Um, and finally, number six, and we've hit this in, in, in Wisdom Wednesdays before, build your social networks. It's been proven over and over again that the more friends you have and the more you stay in touch with them, even just calling them or emailing them that and, and, and getting a thread going back and forth is a social connection. And it people that tend to have more social connections tend to be healthier. So, um, that's our six things that uh, you can use to have a healthier brain. Now, my health tip of the week, and this one I had to kind of, I, you know, I buy it, but I'll, I'll tell you my own personal deal. Get more lycopene. What is lycopene? It's the thing that makes tomatoes red. Uh, it is a uh, powerful antioxidant found, as far as I know, mainly in tomatoes, unless you can buy lycopene supplements, which you probably can, and just take them by capsule form, which would be my preferred method, because I just had a salad uh, at lunchtime, and I, I scraped all the tomatoes off. <laughs> and then I, then I 
read the script for this and went, uh, okay, probably I shouldn't even tell people that, but I'm not real crazy about tomatoes. Maybe one slice on a cheeseburger, which I'd maybe not even do once a month. But if you're not a tomato eater, buy the supplements, buy the pills. Uh, I don't even know what the recommended daily allowance of it is, but look up lycopene, uh, do your own research and decide for yourself. It is a powerful antioxidant. What do antioxidants do? They find inflammation in your body and they fight cancer. So that's my Wisdom Wednesday for the last Wisdom Wednesday of July. I will see you next Wednesday for first version in the month of August. And my lip should be back to normal by then. See you later.